Uh, right, it is 8.45. Now, an investigation by Five Live has revealed a significant rise in the number of people reporting that their drinks have been spiked. In total, there were more than 2,600 drink spiking incidents in nearly five years. These are figures from the police in England and Wales. They say the number of reports trebled from 2015 to 2018. And this isn't just an issue for younger people. 15% of reports affected people over 40 Nearly three quarters of all victims were female. So uh, what happens when your drink or someone else's is targeted? We can ask 21-year-old student Isabel Frew, who just last month was out with her flatmate, Kristen Evans, went to for a night out in Manchester. But things started to go badly wrong for Isabel soon after she arrived at the club. Hi, Isabel. Hi, Kristen. Hi. Hi. Thanks both for joining us. So... Um, Normal night out, Isabel, set the scene for us. Um, yeah, it was a very normal night out. One of our favourite DJs was playing in Manchester. I'm from Manchester. So we travelled from our uni in Birmingham back home to Manchester to go and see him. Um, but things turned wrong very, very quickly. So, yeah, things turned bad quite quickly. Uh, tell us about the turning bad. What happened? Um, so we got to the club at probably, I don't know, between 10 and 11. Yeah. Um, and we only had one drink when we got in the club. Um, but I remember we noticed that the drink, it was like quite a big, um, it, was a big it, it, it wasn't closed, the cup wasn't closed. And I remember we both thought that was really weird. Yeah, that there was the, no way to sort of protect your drink from being spiked in the first place. Yeah. Um, so I think I drank about three quarters of the drink mm. before you realised that I wasn't, yeah, I wasn't something okay. Was something was really wrong. I just remember... My legs just weren't working. My body just wasn't working in the way it was supposed to work. My brain couldn't tell my body what to do. I couldn't walk in a straight line. I couldn't really talk. Mm. It just wasn't. And Kristen realised very quickly because you were... That's the thing. We'd basically drunk about the same amount of alcohol and I still felt quite sober and I didn't feel like the alcohol was affecting me in the same way. You'd had a couple of drinks before you went out. Yeah, um, yeah. we probably had sort of two drinks before we went out and then one when we were there. Um... But I think it was sort of the point where I wasn't reacting the same way that I realised that something else obviously was in her drink because otherwise, like, it didn't make sense. Describe what was happening to Isabel then. What did you see? Um, so when we were walking, it was like her body just didn't want to cooperate with her brain because her speech was OK. Like, she was able to talk to me, but it was like her legs um, wouldn't work and, like, her basically her muscles had gone to jelly and I had to lead her out of the nightclub Um obviously like leading her through crowds and um once we actually got outside obviously like she was sick really really sick um and like in the taxi she couldn't keep her head upright um and she kept like smacking her head against the window and so I had to hold um her shoulders to keep her upright because I just think all of her muscles just stopped working which is like quite a terrifying um like sight to see you actually stopped her from finishing the drink is that right yeah I think it just sort of got to the point where I was like Obviously, it's it's not right. Yeah. Let's just throw them away. I didn't finish my drink either because I was just thinking we need we need to go now. And was your um, immediate thought that she may have had her drink spiked at this moment? Well, not at first because obviously I think the the effects are quite quick because we weren't there very long before uh, before we left. We left before one. Um, but I I would say it's probably when we got back home when you realised that yeah. something really wasn't okay. Yeah, I think in the taxi when she couldn't hold her head up right, I was like something isn't right here. But it was when we'd actually got back to her house and she couldn't even sort of stand and she started to hyperventilate and and like was crying and it was like all becoming a bit too much. I realised something clearly was wrong and I was pretty much certain that her drink was spiked. It sounds like a, a really scary experience for both of you. I think it is because yeah, you, you don't expect it to happen to someone yeah. you know and and your body just not working I just remember feel like I couldn't stand and I couldn't walk and I just remember thinking like what what's happened what's wrong I feel when you realize that you're like your limbs aren't working the way they're supposed to work you just realize that something something really isn't isn't okay and it's quite a scary prospect especially when we're two young girls in town it's just quite it's quite scary to think about yeah. You know, you said at the beginning um, the drinks came to you in a big kind of open cup or glass. Yeah. I mean, that's how I'd expect a drink to come, like maybe in a pint glass or something like that. Why Why did it seem unusual to you? Well, I think it's the thing of most of the time when you go to like a festival or a gig or something, if you get water, obviously, you can cover the cap or most bottles, you can put your thumb over the top. 
um, or like get a lid on them. So sort of having something that open when you know there is the possibility of your drink being spiked. So that is something that is going through your head when you're going out. Oh, yeah, definitely. I tried as much as possible to have my hand over it. And when I got to a point where I drank sort of about half of it, I tried to kind of, um, tried to kind of uh, close the top of it. So I was just drinking through the straw. Right. But if you think, I think if you've had more drinks before you've gone out in the first place, that's not something that's going to go through your head. And I think it's so easy with the size that it was just for someone to walk past and... Yeah, that's probably what happens. I just yeah. because you didn't just past you, me. you didn't put your drink down at any stage. No, so no. I was no. with us the whole time. See, we already know like to not take drinks from people you don't know. Never leave your drink unattended. These are the things that, as like young women in town, like we know, yeah. they're drilled into you. Yeah, yeah. Um, so for it to happen so easily when the drink is in my hand the whole time mm. is is uh, quite a scary prospect. What do you think the motivation is? I don't know, but it, the way I was and the way I felt, someone could have easily, if it went a wrong way, if it happened to me and Kristen, or if I got lost, or if I got separated, mm. like someone could have definitely taken advantage because my body was not working, mm. couldn't stand, couldn't walk. So I don't know what someone's motivation is though, because there was thousands of people at yeah. this at this place. So how they could find me again, I don't know. I don't know. Do they want to ruin a woman's night out? I just, I don't know what their motivation is. It just is. seems bizarre, doesn't it? I mean, yeah. we know that in the past that um, drugs like Rehypnol have been used um, yeah. to sexually attack women. But yeah. as we understand it, this rise in the number of cases being reported at least seems to suggest it's more than that. Some people are just being pranked. For others, mm. we had a text earlier from, from a woman, a mum in her 30s, doesn't drink at all. So this was in a soft drink and it turned out that she had been robbed of her debit card. So we know that oh robbery may also be yeah. a motivation. Yeah, and there's so many different things and I don't know, like, look, I couldn't even tell you who it was. Like, so many people obviously passed me that night. Um, I have no idea why they do it and what's the, what's the point of doing it? Mm. It's just, it's strange to me. The other thing that we talked about, the tragic, absolutely tragic case of a young man, an 18-year-old boy who died after... It, it seems like his, his drink was spiked and his yeah. dad was saying one issue he thinks is just the availability and the low cost of drugs these days. So, yeah. you know, if yeah. you want to think of it from the point of view, why it, it might have been 10 or 20 years ago, why would you share your drugs with every, anyone? Waste them, if you like, yeah. on someone yeah. else. <laughs> yeah, These days that isn't such a consideration. Do, no. would, would that make sense to you? That does make sense. Seeing... Um, Obviously, we've been out and we see other people mm. and we see the, the the climate that these city centres are in on nights out. It is, a, yeah, that is, I can see how that's linked. Yeah. I wonder what can be done then to improve protections. Um, I mean, clearly, we need to take action against the people who are doing it. But mm. what have you learned, both of you, from this experience in terms of, it seems like you did the absolutely the right thing, but how, mm. how on earth would you protect yourself from that happening again? I think it's the sort of the it increases your awareness um on on nights out more so than it was before it was already heightened anyway yeah but um, you never think that it's going to happen to you so and when it does it sort of makes you re-evaluate do you get drinks when you're in the club yeah, do you is want it? is it worth it and also I think there needs to be definitely more awareness because Kristen was saying like the security staff were no help when mm. she was trying to like get me out of the club when I couldn't walk. They just assumed that I was really drunk and that wasn't the case. So I feel more awareness of um, what someone looks like mm. and acts like when they're spiked so they can have more help mm. straight away. Like Kristen had to deal with me all by herself because none of the bouncers were helping. So I think more awareness like that is definitely needed. A couple of texts on this. My son had his water bottle spiked at a local music festival in the summer. The impact on him has led to profound social anxiety. Unable yeah. to cope with going to university, he has sleep problems, suffering from low mood. He is slowly recovering with professional help, but the impact this has had on a previously super confident and independent 18-year-old is phenomenal. Yeah. Um, and just this one I'll read to you. Ben says, uh, the issue of spiking notwithstanding, this is great testimony to the importance of having good friends and looking out for each other when you're out in the yeah. bar. Yeah, yeah. Kristen's definitely a great friend for um, dealing with me and looking after me. I'm um, forever grateful that she realised when she did and she got me out uh, before something could have gone terribly, terribly wrong. 
Well, thank you both so much for talking to us. Um, thank you for having us. Yes. And I think it's really important that um, um, as many people hear that story as possible um, and can learn from it. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, the thank National you. Police Chiefs Council say forces are working closer than ever before with pubs and clubs. They say acting quickly is the key. So tell police as soon as you can that substances may have been used because otherwise they dissipate in drinks very quickly. And the British Beer and Pub Association says safety is a priority. They work with local authorities and police to try to protect customers. 8.56...